What's going on everyone? ODC here, and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review and video, we're going to take a look at the Star Wars Black Series, uh, comic book series actually, I should say, um, Heir to the Empire, Luke Skywalker. Now, this is a, I guess, Legends version of Luke, but this is actually one of my favorite looks for Luke. Um, my favorite being uh, still Jedi Luke. Uh, from Return of the Jedi, but uh, this is a, I want to say it, it's its up there as far as looks go for him. Um, I didn't mind the some reuse of the Dagobah Luke body because it's actually one of my favorites. The head, um, I love the Dagobah Luke head. I think it's the best head sculpt for Luke Skywalker that we've got so far. And... Um, yeah, very pleased um, that they actually went with this head sculpt as opposed to some other head sculpt or maybe a newer one. Um, this is probably the best likeness to Mark Hamill out of any of the uh, Luke Skywalker figures. So, um, But uh, if this isn't just a review of the figure, obviously you can see there's some elements to my figure that are a little bit different from the regular release that should have probably been um, institutionalized with this release. Um, it should have been given. And um, there's definitely, uh, this, this figure definitely um, really was hindered by budget um, and cost. And that's pretty much what the comic book line is, which, you know, it's, it's great and all that they're doing a comic book line. But in that same token, it's almost like, why even bother at all if you're not going to put any money into these figures? Now, granted, there are some, there's some new tooling with some of the other figures like Jackson and um, a couple of the others, but there's there was like nothing with him. It was just straight up green Luke lightsaber, the same green one that we got for uh, Endor Luke um, and Dagob Luke body. That's that's all it was. It was very very just much of a repack reuse. Um, no new tooling at all. They didn't give him a belt or anything new. Um, so, I mean, I didn't mind even the Dagobah Luke legs if they would have just changed him from the knee down. Now, as you can see, he doesn't have the Dagobah Luke feet on here because I swapped them. And there's some different things that uh, I put on the figure itself just to make him look a lot more accurate to the actual comic depiction. Um, and this is just a little PSA. Um, <laughs> I am fully aware that um, this Luke right here um, that I have made is not 100% accurate to. Um, I know I reiterate, I'm just reiterating that because I alluded to that earlier. Um, he doesn't have the black glove in Heir to the Empire. I get it. He kind of has a regular hand, which kind of doesn't make sense. It never made sense to me even reading the comic um, or the novel that he doesn't have his glove because clearly after um, Return of the Jedi, he still has his glove on, so he still has a damaged hand. So it didn't make sense to me that he had a normal hand after, um, and this takes place after, obviously, Return of the Jedi. So I don't know. I just thought if you're if you're already in somebody, I know there's so many of me in the comments who are like, well, this isn't accurate either. I get it. He had the blue lightsaber in the comic, and he didn't have a black glove. Uh, but he also wore an all-black attire, and he had black gloves on, and so, I don't know, I guess it's kind of give or take, but I, I still, the reason why I kind of made this was just a, like a little, I don't know, I just thought it looked better than what we got, which I thought was kind of, you know, a little bit lazy. So, I just wanted to leave that out there. I went, uh, I like the green, him with his green lightsaber, I think it makes sense, especially ha these are events happening after Return of the Jedi, so he would have his green lightsaber, he wouldn't have a blue one. Um... But anyway, um, as far as some of the, the modifications I've done to the figure, um, it's very simple. Um, I had an extra Luke Skywalker um, Jedi Knight. Um, I took the, just the, the black hand off of there. And I'm still looking for like a, like a glove cuff piece to put over this. Um, I might just uh, take some extra plastic and just kind of glue it around his wrist just so it looks like an actual glove is kind of cuffing up here, which makes more sense for that. Uh, but for now, it looks fine like this. I know it kind of looks like a latex or black glove on him, but I'll, I'll fix it up once I get it all completed. Um, 
the next piece, which I really actually just went outside the Black Series for, was his belt here. This is actually off of a Marvel Legend. Um, and this was actually, I think, off a of female Marvel Legend. It was. It said in the... Uh, I actually bought this off eBay, this, this little fodder piece right here. It cost me a couple bucks, and that was about it. Um, but the fodder piece said Marvel Legends female stealth belt. That's all it said. So I don't know where it's from. I would be more than happy to give you guys that information, but I'm not sure what belt it is from. Maybe somebody can let me know in the comments, but I thought it fit the aesthetic. Um, it was black. Um, if you see him on his cover art, he does have a blackish brownish um, belt. So I just went with black because I thought it fit the aesthetic. And I think it looks good. Just the, the pouches there and then two pouches on the back. Now I did have to trim it up and customize it a little bit more. So I trimmed it because it was actually, the belt was too large for his body. Black Series figures, especially Luke, runs on a very slim body. So I trimmed it up and I kind of glued it over here. And this pocket was actually going to be cut off. So I had to cut this pocket off, uh, trim it up, glue this section over here. As you can see, that section's a little bit different. How it's... Uh, how it's uh, kind of asymmetrical, how this piece is over here, and there's no piece touching that over there. So I had to cut that off because this was attached to that. And then I had to separate the pouch and glue it on separately. So that's pretty much what I did. I just trimmed it up, nothing crazy. This isn't like an amazing custom or anything like that. The boots, like I said, I couldn't do much with the legs. I wanted to put the Jedi Knight Luke legs on here. But the problem with that is that that Jedi Knight body is from 2013 and it's not the easiest to get the legs off. And I was too afraid of snapping the peg joint off of my Jedi Knight Luke. And I'll just kind of bring it in here to show you what I'm talking about. Because I actually just finished up on my um, uh, Shadows of the Empire Luke. So Shadows of the Empire Luke used the same body as uh, Jedi Knight Luke. I wanted to use these legs because it made more sense for the uh, character design for that. But uh, the ball peg on here and trying to remove this leg, even as much as I did heat it up, um, I even used hot water. It just doesn't like to separate and it doesn't, th this plastic on here is such a harder plastic as opposed to the newer softer plastic that they're using for the upper, um, for the th uh, thigh pieces for the legs on these ones. So. These were actually easy to remove, these legs, when you heated them up. These are still a hard plastic, and I was too afraid of snapping the ball peg on here. So um, I just said, screw it. I'll just um, work with what I have uh, for the most part. So I went with just the Dagobah Luke legs, which are a little bit baggier and look a little more, I guess, a little bit more natural. Um, I kept the... I even was going to try to uh, disassemble the knee from the knee down, but he's got double jointed knees here. It's a completely different knee system entirely. So I ended up just saying, you know what, screw it. At least if I have the bottom of the boot looking like a normal boot, um, that's fine. So I actually went with the Yavin Ceremony boot and I swapped the boots for this one. So this guy's going to turn into like a custom fodder piece because I used his belt for um, Shadows of the Empire, Luke. Um, he's going to turn into a custom fodder character. Um, I don't know who yet, though. But he he uh, retains all of his articulation. There's nothing really anything different. He still has a ball and neck uh, pivot point right there. He can look up about that far. He can look down. He can pivot side to side. He can swivel, full 360 rotation. He's got two points of articulation at the head and the neck and then at the neck and the torso. So he could really look down if you need him to. Um, it looks really good and natural too. And you can pivot side to side. Let's see, we've got some job turkeys. Oh yeah, we got some turkeys up in here. So there's that. Arms go up about that far, down, full 360 rotation in the arm. Uh, single jointed elbow, which gets way more than 90 degrees, which is fantastic. I love this body mold. Uh, swivel at the wrist. He's got a uh, lateral, um, hinge joint and then he's got a vertical hinge joint on this side so that's what we need with a lot of these figures um, he does have a diaphragm joint which can twist and it is ratcheted pivot side to side he can crunch back he can crunch forward a little bit um, he can do the splits really well with this luke body i love it legs go forward 
and they go back just a little bit. Upper thigh swivel. He does a single jointed knee. He can swivel that knee as well. Points the toe, points the heel, ankle pivot, all that fun stuff. And there goes the other Luke. Lukes are knocking each other over. And we'll do one with a stormtrooper. And he still retains that height that you need for Luke. Um, I'll even bring up Bespin Luke, old, old Bespin Luke. And uh, there we go with that. DC Multiverse figure and a Articulated Icons Ninja. There you go. Red and red, why not? It's like I was thinking about that subconsciously. And then we'll throw in a Marvel Legend really quick. There's Shocker. And we'll throw in a Classifieds figure. There's Duke. Uh, Mezco's, obviously. I mean, you could, you could go with a Mezco figure if you wanted to. Um, here's a uh, figure arts right here. Let's bring in Maul. There you go. Okay, uh, really quick, just uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on was the pretty much the only other accessory that Luke comes with, um, other than his lightsaber, is the uh, used Salamiri. Um, is the little pet right here for Thrawn that we always see around his neckline. Um, it's the four-eyed creature that actually creates, I believe it excretes or creates, like, anti-force usage bubbles. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still canon, uh, but that's what it does um, pretty much. That's why Thrawn always has one around him. So if he does ever come in contact with a force wielder, um, they won't actually be able to use... Um, force powers against him. Uh, so it actually does make sense, but still, I mean, fighting ability wise, Thrawn can throw down. Um, and uh, I thought it was a pretty cool little touch that they added that in. He, he always has that around him. It also adds to his character aesthetic um, as far as the design goes for him. And uh, I, th I just think it's, it's another smart, cool little Thrawn thing that he does that just adds to his character. Here it is up close and personal if you need to see it. You can see. It's got a little bit of detail right around the eyes. The eyes are just two black dots right there. And oops, sorry. And then over here as well. Let me just get my lighting fixed here. There we go. And on this side. <laughs> but pretty cool sculpt. It's just another little creature that they've added in with some sort of like, uh, uh, I guess for a selling point for most people. But it's actually not just Thrawn that they have used the new Salamiri, so. Uh, but pretty cool. I like it. It does fit around Luke or anybody else's uh, neckline, too, or on their shoulders, whatever. But I always put it around Thrawn's. I just think it makes more sense for that. Yeah. Other than that, that's pretty much it for me. Um, you know, this is just like a shorter video I wanted to do just to kind of give people the heads up in case they wanted to do something. Like I said, this guy is so much fun to pose. I have so much fun with this Dagobah Luke body. I have, I cannot put this guy down. He is so much fun to, to get into any sort of pose, position, whatever you want to do, man. You can do it with this guy, and he looks so much more natural. I love him. He's a fantastic figure. Such a good head sculpt. Awesome. Between this head sculpt and the new Darth Maul, the apprentice, Sith Apprentice one, shit. This is why I continue to, to collect the Black Series. He looks so good. So damn good. And you can just pose however you want him to pose. You can, you can get down on it. He's about to... There we go. Let's get him appropriately situated here he's just about to pounce on somebody here we're gonna do some sort of like slashing he's about to he's about to slash somebody get him like this with a leaping slash situation or like a dashing That little, a little bit more natural. There we go. Leaping, I'm about to slice your head off. 
It's like the last thing you see before your head is disconnected from the rest of your body. <laughs> oh man, so fun. I just, I love this, this body. It's so much fun to play around with and just uh, take photos with. It's so cool. So I don't know, maybe I'll shoot some photos and I need to start doing more of that. I've been wanting to do more of that, um, especially living in, in the location that I live in and the space that I have to shoot things. It's just, damn. So that's pretty much it for me. Um, like I said, this is just my update for the Heir to the Empire Luke. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.